great morning friendship. Can you do me a favor and just put your hands together with us? Come on. You think you can sing that with us one time? Let's sing it. You are good. You are. 
God is mercy. Somebody give the Lord praise. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise. If you know the Lord has been good, if you know that the Lord's been good, I'm looking for a few people that can shake off this morning and say, I come to praise God. I come to worship the Lord. Why? Because he's been better. Yes, sir. I say, if you've been better to me, then I've been to myself. Can I try it again? Come on. Come on. It says, you've been better to me, then I've been to myself. Come on, you try it. Yes, sir.
reconciling, bringing back a world that was estranged to him, unto himself. Why? Because he loves us. And that's why it's so important when you say, you don't know. But the Lord knew what we needed before we needed what we needed. And the Lord provided. And he says, I want you to remember how I have provided for you. I want, I want you to remember. So he says, I want you to take something very familiar. I want you to take bread and I want you to take familiar wine. But I don't want you to become enamored to the familiarity of the substance. But I want you to know that in the familiar, I've done something new. Done something for you. And he said, as often as you, you, as often as each one of us will eat of that bread and drink from that cup, notice what he said, you do show the Lord's death. He did die. He was crucified on the cross. Burial, he was wrapped and buried in a borrowed tomb. But you see, the story doesn't end. That's why I, I, I like and I don't like these little things here. But, but I, I like it because, see, to get to it, you got to open it. God opened a tomb. I don't know how he did it. He doesn't give me a five-point plan. All I know is says when they got there, it was opened. God opens doors and experiences for his children. So let us now prepare to eat and to drink, remembering what God has done. Let us pray. We thank you for this reminder of what you have already done. As we gather as people of faith, your people, your children, Thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that we have because of your sacrifice. And as we will eat and as we will drink this morning, help us not to take your love for granted. Help us not to spawn or minimize your sacrifice. But with utmost we bow and we say thank you. And as we will eat, Lord, and as we will drink from the cup, we do it in remembrance of you. Amen. Amen. Then the Lord took the bread and broke it and gave it to them. And says, eat. And as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you do show you do demonstrate to all who would watch but mainly to yourself the Lord's death, burial and resurrection until he comes. And he took the cup and he says drink. And in so eating and in drinking, you do show your love for Christ. Let us break bread together. Amen.
and the burden. What did it do? Yeah, that's the sound right there. It was there. Good morning, Friendship Family. Morning. To those of you who are in this beautiful sanctuary, good morning to you. To our streaming audience and family at home, good morning to you. What a privilege to be alive this morning. What a blessing to still have the breath of life in your bodies this morning. And we thank God for it. As we prepare our hearts and mind now for Pastor Jones who will come for the preach word this morning, we are oftentimes reminded by him that no matter how holy and sanctified and how many hallelujahs that we may say, that every day isn't going to necessarily be filled with sunshine, though. That no matter how good you are, that, that some days will have its stormy type of sea, if you will. We get to this point right now and we find hymnody that gives us encouragement when we reach times in our lives that are stormy. And this, first, this first kind of piece is a, is a plea. It's a plea that says that when the storms of life are raging, Lord, please, 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 please stand by us. Stand by me. After sometimes of going through storms, you'll have the testimony that, you know what, even those billows may roll, that we do know that our Heavenly Father will watch over us. And it is because of that that we can always proclaim that no matter what the situation is, that we are safe in the arms of Jesus. We're going to try something a little different this morning, and, and um, uh, we just want these words, whether you're at home, in this sanctuary now, wherever you are, to be able to comfort you and give you hope when you come into the times, the days, the weeks, the period of your stormy season.
I trust in God wherever I may be on a mountain bleak or out on a stormy sea for come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know, I know He cares. On a mountain top or down in the river where it's very low, my billows roll. He keeps my soul, my heavenly Father watches over.
and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ his Son, our living Lord and our reigning and supreme Savior. It's good to be here, have another day and another opportunity to praise and worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. To our streaming family, thank you for your support and your presence. Thank you for your patience. And, uh, now that we're back uh, live, and see, when I didn't have a congregation and it was just two or three of us in here, I was pretty much on point. I'd preach about 19, 21 minutes, and I would be finished. But since this crowd has been here, I've been preaching a little longer. Uh, so, so don't don't cut me off at, at, at 10 o'clock. Just just hold on a little bit longer. I know I know you want to switch that thing, but you just you just hold on for a couple more moments, and uh, we will do this in good spiritual time. Thank you again for your support and prayers as we're involved in phase two of adjusting uh, to this environment. We are uh, happy for all of you, but I want to acknowledge a uh, young lady that is uh, running for the Senate in the state of North Carolina. And uh, our policy is we don't allow the candidates to come up and do political speeches um, because I don't want persons to stand up and lie in church. And, uh, and they will come here and they will talk uh, all kind of smack. And so the, to try to help them get in the kingdom, uh, we ask persons to stand. Uh, and Sister Beasley, is, uh, stand up, Sister Beasley. You may even want to sling that mask off just quickly. They can see you. Uh, Sister Beasley is uh, running for the Senate. And uh, we're proud of her and thank God for her. And I want to make it clear, uh, all candidates who are running, you're welcome to come. And I'll do the same for you, uh, for you to stand and uh, let people see you. And, and I'm going to say it, and one of the mistakes that I think uh, one party is making is that they don't come around. Uh, they just write us off. And uh, in friendship, you have independents, you have Republicans, you have Democrats, you have some that won't vote. Uh, we got them all. And so um, be sensitive to that. We're praying for you, my sister. And uh, know that you're, uh, I, I shouldn't say it, you're not in a race, you're in a fight. And uh, so uh, you may need to remember some of your hood skills. <laughs> As you, I'm sorry, but you, you, you know, you're so nice and pleasant and, you know, to read and lovely. God bless you, but remember, you're in a dog fight. And so you need to do what you need to do. And I'll talk to you after service. And, you know, if we have to have coffee a little bit, you know, you need to move away from Brother Todd and Sister Yvonne. Let, let, let me just come on to the hood and let's talk plain about what we got to deal with. I want to talk this morning from two passages of Scripture, the book of Jonah, chapter 1. In Mark chapter 6. You've already heard the theme uh, for the morning when we talked about storms. I want to talk from the subject with the Lord in the storm. I wanted to put that in that order. With the Lord. It was in 1933 that the song was introduced by Ethel Waters, the Cotton Club in Harlem. Uh, it was sung later by Lena Horne, uh, sang it a lot. Billy Holiday uh, would sing it some. And even, I don't know how he did it, a privileged Frank Sinatra tried to sing it. And uh, it simply says, I don't know why. There's no sun up in the sky, stormy weather. I Googled that, I um, was reading that, and I noticed that in Googling it, they even have a version of this song for children and kids. If you just go to YouTube.com uh, and uh, Google stormy weather, they will have a series of songs for kids about stormy weather because they recognize that kids also have storms. We 
We recognize as we live that according to the Farmer's Almanac, uh, that between May and July of any calendar year globally, it is known as the stormy season. And during the stormy season, especially during dog days, some of you uh, who read the Almanac, that's a period from the middle of July through the middle of uh, August, uh, when insects are bad and snakes are shedding their skin. It's not a time to plant. It's muggy. It's hot. It's rainy. Uh, it can be a miserable time. Life brings stormy seasons. Are you listening? Show me a life and I will show you a life that has had, even if it's closet, some storms. Because many seek to live and carry themselves in such a way that we would want you to think that life is a Sabbath. Every day is Sunday. We would carry ourselves in such a way that we would want you to think that we've got it all together all the time. Always had, always will. But life brings some storms. And I believe two prime examples of this are found in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, Jonah and his storm. And also we find it in Mark, chapter 6, where the disciples, for whatever reason, and I'm going to try to give those reasons or that reason, found themselves in a storm. Jonah chapter 1, the Lord speaks to Jonah and gives Jonah a direction. But though the Lord spoke to Jonah, Jonah still had a stormy situation. Mark chapter 6, we find that Jesus tells the disciples to cross over to the northwest side of the Sea of Galilee. But in between Capernaum and Magdala, in the middle of the night, fourth watch, 3 to 6 a.m., out of nowhere, a storm arises. Jesus told them to go, but in telling them to go, he did not tell them that they would have a storm before they got to the other side. Contrary winds. There are two reasons, I believe, for Jonah and the disciples that they had this storm. For Jonah, it was disobedience. Whenever one is disobedient to God, and I know that's, that's a word that no one likes now. No one wants to be obedient. No, no one, uh, even infants, uh, don't want you to tell them what to do. I've got a little over three-year-old granddaughter, and you know she has the nerve sometimes to tell me, no, pop, pop, three. I was my mother, and she was my mother's grandchild. She wouldn't have said that but once. <laughs> but now I'm afraid, as smart as she is, she may dial 911. <laughs> she, got, she get that iPad, and I don't know whether, you know, she's sharp enough to do that or not. We live in a culture. We live in a time where no one, I shouldn't say it like that, but obedience is on hard times because everybody has an opinion, everybody has a way, everybody has a thought. And sometimes when you're grown and pay taxes, you don't want anybody to tell you what to do anytime. Jonah found himself in a storm because of disobedience. The disciples, uh, the, the 12 of them, and I'm, I'm going to pick at this a little while. Uh, I need you to eat some bony fish this morning. Y'all like filet, but uh, good tasting fish has bones in it. Um, and uh, so I need y'all to eat some bony fish with me for just a few moments this morning. The disciples, uh, the 12 of them, Judas and Thomas and Philip, James and John and Simon, Peter, all of them, they were there. They had returned from 
being commissioned by the Lord to go out into the world and, 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 and to heal and cast out demons. And they came back and they were shouting about their victories. And then on the heels of that, you find the feeding of the 5,000 by Jesus. And you see an attitude surfacing. When Jesus says something about they said, Lord, when are we going to get the money to feed all of them? To feed all that crowd, we'd have to work almost a half a year, Lord. And he said, what do you have in your hands? I said, we don't have nothing but five loaves and two fish. He took what they had and fed the multitude. And then in the same breath, he sends them to the other side. But before they could get to where they were sent, <laughs> a storm. I want to argue that the second reason that persons will have storms is when you have collective hardness of heart. When you are impassionate, unconcerned towards others, be very careful because in all probability you're going to have a storm. There are three things that I want to say and let me say that and um, conclude. Will not quite conclude. Um, there are three things that I want you to take away from this. Uh, one, the word storm watch. Watch disobedience and hard heartedness. Storm watch. Watch. Uh, you know you, right? Watch disobedience. The Lord said, you don't do it. And hard-heartedness, in compassion, insensitivity, not caring. So what in your face? Who cares? Do what I want to do. Take guns to the airport, speed. Tell people to fight like hell. Are y'all listening to me? Hard-heartedness. Who cares about the children in hospitals in Ukraine? Bomb. Who cares about seniors fleeing with nothing? Bomb. Who, who cares? Hard-heartedness. Deliberately slowing around and addressing issues, specifically in Durban and Chadwick, South Africa where people have lost everything. They watched as their homes and everything washed down riverbanks where they built shanties on the side of mud hills. They watched, no compassion without any caring. They watched and would sit up and cut cakes and drink bottled water and suck their teeth with no compassion. Be careful of hard heartedness because when you're hard hearted, before you get to where you're going, and I'm going to say it, there can be storms. Second thing that I'd say about this, um, this, these passages that I want you to take away, learn through your blessings or be taught by your storms. Learn from your blessings. You know, the Lord is blessing me right now. Good, good. What did you learn from it? What have you learned as good as the Lord? Talk to me, somebody. As good as the Lord has been to you. Don't look at your neighbor. I don't need you to look at your neighbor. You don't need to give your neighbor a high five. But look at yourself, where you are. I was in Lowe's, I think Thursday, getting some things to work in my yard. And I wasn't dressed like a preacher. I was just dressed like Cliff. And I like that. I, I, uh, Brenda would have been ashamed of how I dress. Um, but I, 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 you know, you know, you know uh, I was at Lowe's and I had my card and I was looking at the plant section, because I always like that plant section that's a discount. You know, this plant's a little withered. You know, why pay $5 when you can go back and get 6 for $1.98? 
water them for 24 hours, give them some sunshine, and in a week, you know, I, 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 you know that's just good business sense. <laughs> and um, I was looking at um, the um, cedar chips, because I like to put cedar chips, because they're good for insects and uh, repelling insects, and they're nice, and they give a nice fragrance. This gentleman was standing there, and you could tell that he had been ill. Uh, he was uh, overweight, and I uh, had on shorts, and you could tell from his legs, the bottom of his legs, that he had been ill, and he was slow, he had a stick in his cart, and he was looking at the cedar chips, and he saw me, and I saw him. He said, am I in your way? I said, no. Uh, he said, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to get the cypress or the, the cedar. And I said, well, I like the cedar myself. I said, because it's, he said, you know, I like the cedar too. And something said to me, put a bag in his cart. And I picked up a bag and dropped it in his cart. He looked at me. He said, thank you. He said, I wanted a bag, but I didn't think I could lift it. He said, I should be dead. He said, I had COVID. Back then, I wouldn't want to say, hey, hey, hey. You know, I, I want to back up off of him. You know, uh, stay with me. He said, I should be dead. He said, I, I had COVID and, and I shouldn't be here and I shouldn't, shouldn't even be able to walk. He said, thank you so much for putting that in the basket for me. And I said, oh, you're welcome. Glad to do it. And he got ready to walk away and he stopped and looked back at me and said, what is your name? I looked at him. I said, Clifford Jones. He said, Clifford, I'm going to pray for you. Hear me this morning. Most unlikely person, um, different ethnic backgrounds. Um, I was probably older, but he looked older. Um, I didn't ask him for prayer. I don't know whether I looked like I needed prayer where I was dressed. Uh, but his words to me, and then it caught me off guard. I, I, I wasn't expecting him. I, I should have been saying, let me pray with you. But, but, he, but he looked at me dead in the eyes and said, Clifford, I'm going to pray for you. He said, you were kind to me. And, um, and I want to thank you for that. Then he walked off and looked back again and said, Clifford, have a good day. And remember, I'm going to be praying for you. Clifford, right? I said, yeah. And before he could get away, something that at least could ask his name. I said, what is your name? Uh, he said, Jim, said, I, I said my last name, said I was a boy when I, I didn't like what my daddy was saying, said I want you to remember my last name by remembering two words, possum tail. Possum tail. He said, my last name is pa Postel, Jim Postel. Then he said, Clifford, I'm going to pray for you. Be careful that you don't have a hard or hardness of heart towards others because of how they look or because of what they may say. You never know when the Lord doesn't have an angel on a walking stick. And uh, whenever you are uh, disobedient and have a hardness of heart, be careful because storms can be up the road. Third thing that I would say in this passage, perseverance and presence. Selah. That means pause. Trust the Lord. Perseverance. presence. Selah. Trust the Lord. Jonah had made up his mind he wasn't going. In fact, if you check some biblical geography, you will find that Jonah was going 2,000 miles out of the way. He was trying to get to Spain when the Lord had sent him to Nineveh. Nineveh, from where he was, was about 500 miles, but the route that he took in getting on this cargo ship, probably bound for Spain, was about 2,000 miles out of the way. Bought his ticket, went downstairs, and went to sleep. 
I want you to notice Jonah chapter 1, verse 4. And once he went downstairs, and as soon as they pushed off, a storm arose out of nowhere. Uh, these mariners were familiar with storms, but there was something unusual about this storm. And, and so to lighten their load, they, they started throwing cargo overboard. And the more they threw over, uh, the more the bolsterous winds troubled the sea. Uh, it didn't, how can I say this? It didn't target the ship, but, but God got involved in the elements. <laughs> He made the wind and the waves and the water. And he could control the wind. And some, if you read the text, uh, there's a conjunction there. But uh, at the, in the beginning of that fourth verse, but, 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 but as they were traveling, uh, the Lord used the wind. And the wind troubled the water and the water troubled the boat. It, it was a rocky situation. The Lord didn't rock the boat. But he troubled the wind, and the wind troubled the water, and the water rocked the boat. The, the Lord indirectly can get to you where you are. He threw everything overboard. And uh, they went down in the middle of that boat, and there was Jonah down there asleep. And he lifts the, this, the captain lifts up a word. Carry thou, don't you know? That, that talk to your God lest we perish. They did all that they could do and finally they threw Jonah overboard. Uh, but you see, there's something about the goodness of God. Even when we are disobedient and try to do things our own way, uh, going in the wrong direction with the wrong attitude. Oh, Lord, uh, going with your mind made up about what you're going to do when you're going to do it. Be very careful with that kind of attitude, especially you religious folk who are Bible toters and cross carriers and scripture quoting the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, but, but do you trust him in your storm? Your, your shepherd won't prevent your storm, but do you trust your Lord in your storm? And then sure enough, they threw Jonah overboard. But there is something about the goodness of the Lord. Fast forward. That even when you're in a storm and cast overboard, the Lord, because the Lord is with you, is duty-bound to take care of you when you're kicked to the curb. He prepared something unexplainable, something irrational, something that's a gross improbability. Ha! The Lord prepared something and swallowed him up, but didn't only swallow him, but held him and kept him until God got him where he wanted him to be. Trust the Lord, but you've got to persevere in the midst of your storms. The disciples were excited. I'm fast forward to Matthew. Uh, the disciples were excited uh, when they got back because demons jumped out because they spoke a word and they were anointing folk with oil and they were healed. And in the midst of all of that, they still had heart issues. They had faith issues. They saw the Lord work miracles, but it didn't sink in. It, they, they, they saw him multiply the loaves, but it didn't sink in. But it wasn't until they were in a storm that they saw the Lord again in an improbable, irrational situation that defies explanation and rationale. In the midst of their storm, they saw the Lord walking. But the boisterous winds and the water and at a midnight hour, the darkest hour, at 3 to 6 a.m., at the darkest hour, wind blurred, they didn't see the Lord. Sometimes when you're in a storm, you cannot see the Lord clearly. Ah, because you don't expect the Lord to show up as he shows up. But we have witnesses here this morning that we can say that I was at a low point in my life. But somehow the Lord came into my low, dark situation and lifted me and has given me joy and victory. You've got to persevere. For the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to the one that will endure until the end. Simply because the Lord is with you, that does not mean you will not have some storms in your life. Just because you have health insurance, it doesn't mean you won't get sick. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. 
And if you do have insurance and do get sick, they're probably going to go up on your policy, but that's another whole discussion. They saw the Lord walking in the midst of their storm. Esther was in a storm. And um, her uncle Mordecai went to her and said, we're in a storm. And she said, to do what I have to do, I'm going to be in a death, deathly situation. She said, I want you all to pray and fast for three, day or three days. And, and sure enough, she said, and after you fast and pray, I'm going to approach the king. Because you see, if you approach the king, who was her mm, husband, uh, yeah, well, we can, uh, yeah, who, uh, they were in the same castle. <laughs> uh, uh, she said, if I approach the king, I, they can put me to death. But if I perish, let me perish. Perseverance. They saw the Lord walking on the water and he walked and stepped in their boat in a rocky situation in a rocking boat. The rock of ages stepped in a rocky situation in a rocky boat and brought stability in the midst of instability. See, that's how God works. God, God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. That's why you heard the, heard the sing this morning, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. That's why Ethel Waters could sing that song, uh, Stormy Weather, much better than Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, eh. but Ethel Waters in 1933 knew what a storm was for a black woman in the business world. So she could say, don't know why, don't know why we have trouble sometimes. But I found out that there is a God if you will just trust the Lord. If you would just trust the Lord with your storm and be vigilant, the Lord will reveal to you joy and deliver you in the storm. Not necessarily from the storm. You've got to ride out some of these storms. But if you would just hold on to God's unchanging hand, you will find that the Lord will make a way. Are you listening? Be not dismayed, whatever the time. Why? God will. God has. He did it for Jonah. He did it for the mariners. He did it for Esther. He did it for Mordecai. <laughs> ah, he did it for Ezekiel. He did it for the disciples. He did it for my grandpa. He did it for my grandma. But I'm here to report that not only did he do it for them then. Oh, I want to holler right here, but I, I've got to be a little dignified, honorable. Oh, uh, I'm so glad that I can say for myself that the Lord has done it for me if it had not been for the Lord on my side. I stop Cliff Jones. I don't know where I would be. That's why I get joy when I think about all that the Lord has done for me. I've been in a storm. I've lived in a storm. I know what it's like. But I'm here to report if you would just stand on the solid rock. God will. God will. Yeah. Take care of you with the Lord in a storm. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Uh, come on and stand. Let's I, let's I keep messing with this. Come on and stand and I'll know it's time to stop. Uh, the Lord is good. He knows what you're going through. Are you listening to me? The Lord knows what you're going through. Check out your attitude. Have you been disobedient to what you know is right and what the Lord would have you to do? And 
You've given lame excuses about rationale and improbability and not understanding and unfathomable and all of that other kind of stuff. The Lord knows. And in very practical ways, he will show you. You have a hardness of heart because of yesterday's pain and a decade ago of anger and resentment and frustration. Get that stuff out of your life. Get that stuff out of your life. And say as the gentleman Jim said to me, I'm praying for you. Somebody prayed for me. That's what it is. That's what I want. Kept me on their mind. Took the time to what? I am so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Somebody prayed for me. If you have not accepted the Lord, please do so. That's very simple. Come on, y'all sing out and leave that, Frank, whatever way you want to do it. As we prepare to go celebrating the goodness of the Lord. If you've not accepted the Lord, you can come on this morning. If you're viewing online, there's an app there that you can follow that will direct you. In terms of accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and affiliating with the Christian church, friendship is a Christian church and we love the Lord. Somebody. Somebody. What else? for this young couple that's come on up to affirm the Lord and make friendship their church family. There are others that are joining online. Thank you. Thank you. Keep working. Don't get discouraged. No, don't stay discouraged. Don't you let nobody keep you down. And, and uh, if they got their foot on your neck, wiggle your toes. Uh, but, but, but don't you refuse to condescend uh, to that kind of evil and mess. Oh Lord, oh, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for being our Lord. We thank you for being with us through the storms for over two years with COVID. What a storm. <laughs> oh, but through it all, you've been faithful. And persons like Jim can stand at Lowe's and, and be a witness of your goodness and your mercy and said, I could have been gone, but for whatever reason, kept him here. We want to thank you. And you kept him here for one reason, to tell me that he was going to pray for me. Thank you for that, Lord. We ask now that you continue to lead us and guide us. We thank you for our sister, Sister Beasley. She's on a journey. You know her. You know her heart. You know her heart's desire. Grant in accordance to your will that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for this day and this time. You're the only one who can speak a Benedictus, which is your blessing. Would you speak it now? For we ask it in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen. I want you just to leave humming and saying, somebody prayed for me. Just tell somebody, somebody prayed for me. I'm so glad.